I'm going to explain this concept of the holographic world computer as a quick aside because it's too cool not to mention. So, you know, in the case of a system like Ethereum, we can think about it like it's one computer. It doesn't have a specific location. There's not actually one computer somewhere that represents the entire Ethereum system, so to speak. But, you know, we treat it as a single logical computer. It has, it has a certain state at any given time. It doesn't have 50 different states. It has a state. It has a certain history, and it has a certain set of contracts, which are, you know, little code programs on this world computer. So at any given time, you know, Ethereum is this like cohesive, coherent machine, this computer, this Turing complete system that really does function like a computer. We can send jobs, like we can send it code to execute on these certain programs. You know, again, like where does this world computer, like why do we call it a world computer? Where is it? Like we, we have to think about it in this different way as being this kind of world computer thing that's sort of like, it's like a computer in the sky or something because it doesn't have a location. There's no, there's no single machine that's responsible for it. One way to you know, think about its structure is as being holographic. And one, one description of what makes a hologram a hologram that I've heard is it's where every piece of the whole is identical to the whole, right? So you have this machine where every subcomponent, every every piece of the machine is actually just a complete copy of the larger machine. So it's this like fractal thing sort of where at the highest level it looks like whatever it looks like and you zoom into the lowest level and it's like the same, it looks the same. And that is how Ethereum is architected in a sense, and all of these systems, right? You have this co this collection of maybe thousands of nodes, and each node is just a copy of the bigger thing. Each Ethereum node, that's why I've drawn it this way, each Ethereum node has its the copy of the the state. It has this execution and state layer here. So it has the state, it has the EVM, right? Each node runs the EVM and it has all the blocks. Each node, in theory, has all the blocks, right? These machines all working together create this super holographic world computer sky machine. And the way this kind of happens, like if you just took one of these machines, you know, in isolation, running the Ethereum, like running Geth, you wouldn't really have anything that interesting. You would have, it wouldn't be crypto, it would be software. It would be some code running and you would have like an EVM and you would have blocks maybe. Like it, it might be an interesting computer science project, but in order to really bring it to life and create this like the great sky computer, you have to unify all of these nodes, right? That's where the consensus comes in, right? When you introduce, and that was the big breakthrough that Satoshi made way back in the day, is when you have some kind of, when you have proof of work or proof of stake, you have some way for all of these individual machines to like cohere and then project into the sky, into the ether, this like world computer thing, right? And that's the magic. That's the big significant difference between these systems and regular pre-crypto computing is you now have this kind of new dimension where these systems are, they're like these holographic projections into the sky that everyone can use and like have visibility into and, and coordinate around, right? So, okay, back to the modular vision.